What's going on YouTube? So a very important product in any brand's lineup is their most affordable vehicle because it represents the most obtainable model that new luxury buyers can aspire for. And that's what I'm standing next to right now, the all new Audi A3. Their premium small sedan that takes a lot of style and tech from its bigger siblings and brings it down to a starting price of only $33,900. So with that being said, let's go ahead and see if this is the Audi sedan to buy. So of course, this is the all new Audi A3 and that does mean it has the all new exterior design. So you're not gonna notice like gigantic changes because Audi tends to be a more evolutionary design process. But one of the important differences is the fact that the single frame grille is finished in this black honeycomb texture instead of the previous bars. This gives the A3 a sportier, more aggressive design. And if you wanna take that a little bit further, Audi, of course, does have the black optic package. And one of the things they've done with this new A3 is made it available on all three trim levels for a pretty small amount of money. That's gonna black out all the chrome on the front grille surrounds, as well as the silver elements down here on the lower fascia and in the rear as well. Now let's come over here to the headlights. We now have standard full LED headlights across the entire A3 lineup. Uh, today we actually have the premium model, so this is the base trim level of the A3. That's going to come with reflector LED headlights. However, you, as you move up the uh, lineup, you're going to have those headlights upgraded until you get to the Prestige, and those are going to have the really fancy Matrix LED headlights and the little bars that run down through here for the animations in the front. Now next up we have our different wheel options. There's only two to choose from. All three trims are going to come standard with a silver 17-inch alloy. Uh, however, I would strongly recommend spending the $800 to upgrade to these 18-inch contrast alloys because they look really nice and set off the overall design. And as we come up here to the mirrors, you're going to have standard heating. Um, however, you're going to need to have the Premium Plus or the optional convenience package if you want blind spot monitoring, power folding, and auto dimming. Let's go ahead and talk about the side of the A3. So as you can see, this looks like pretty much any other typical Audi sedan, and I'm happy to say that it doesn't look too small and too compact. It's coming in at 177 inches in length, which is up about one and a half inches over the previous generation A3, which definitely helps it give that more substantial looking sedan design. Now, let's talk about the rear design. They have really changed quite a bit when it comes to this all new model. It still has a very classy and elegant look, but it just has a little bit more of those modern touches that we've grown to expect from Audi. So we have our big Audi branding right here in the middle. And then let's take a look at these taillights. These are hands down my favorite element about their rear design. These are beautiful, beautiful full LED taillights. You have all of the nice design elements from the premium Audi products. We have an amber dynamic turn signal, and that's gonna be standard equipment on every single A3. Then if we drop down here to the bottom, Bottom. One thing I am slightly disappointed about is that we don't have exposed exhaust outlets. All of them are going to come with this um, de design where it's kind of hidden underneath, but you do have some silver accent. Audi gives you two out of four safety systems, standard equipment on every single A3, and that's going to be forward emergency braking as well as auto high beams. However, you do have to go to at least the premium plus trim level to get lane keeping assist and their adaptive cruise control system with traffic jam assistance. Well guys, we really appreciate you making it this far in our video. Please hit that subscribe button down below if you haven't already. Now let's go ahead and check out the inside before we take it out on a spin. So as we walk up to this next generation A3, you will notice the smart entry system standard on the premium plus trim level or optional on the premium model through the convenience package. As you can see, we do have the brand new Audi key fob design with the nice metal on the bottom. And then of course, to get inside the vehicle itself, just grab behind the handle, it will unlock. Now 
Now taking a look inside this cabin, obviously it is a night and day difference from the outgoing generation. It's also quite a bit different than what you see in the A4 as well because this is a very angular and modern looking design. We're getting first into our interior color and material choices. Just like every single Audi, even this entry level model does come standard with real leather seating. And on all three trim levels, you have the choices between black, parchment, or Santos brown. Now as we turn over here to your drawer trim, it is pretty nicely appointed. We do have a soft touch uh, material for the armrest. You have a leatherette above that, and it is going to be soft touch plastic along the top with the silver accent. The convenience package uh, includes the memory seating on this premium model. It is standard on premium plus and above. And then we of course have four fully automatic windows as well. Coming down to the seat adjustments, these are gonna be eight way power adjusting with four way lumbar support. And like I already mentioned, this is a real leather seat, even on the base premium model. We have the color contrast stitching and then we have the cloth accents that run around the outside edges. Now since this is Audi's entry level product, you're probably wondering how are the materials. And I'm happy to report they are very solid for this category of vehicle. So across the upper dashboard, it's gonna be finished in a soft touch plastic. As we move over here to this area, this is also a soft touch plastic, but we have a kind of a cross stitch that runs across the top to make it look a little bit more premium. As we come down here, this model has a plastic trim as a faux aluminum. You can get an open pour wood trim to come through here if you want a more premium look. And as we come down, you have more of that silver trim. It is gonna be hard touch along the edges. And then we have piano black. Of course, being an Audi though, even this entry level model has very solid build quality, no panel gaps and everything feels, like I said, nice and solid. Now to start it up, put your foot on the brake and press the standard button. And after you fire it up, the first thing you're going to be greeted with is a digital gauge cluster. Actually, regardless of how much money you spend on this model, this is the 10.25 inch setup. Uh, so it's not the full virtual cockpit. That comes on the Prestige model or it's optional on the Premium Plus. However, you'll notice that it looks very similar. It's just a little bit smaller. You're lacking a little bit of the functionality, functionality including the navigation. But otherwise, you can still do a lot of the same stuff. Uh, with reconfiguring the designs and going through that kinds of information and stuff like that. Um, so this is really nice to be included as standard. And then if you go for the Prestige model, that's also going to give you the head-up display. Now as we pull back to the steering wheel, you have the latest Audi design. Uh, it is a very round looking steering wheel, but it is squared off slightly on the sides for better grip. As far as the wheel itself, it is going to be manual, tilt, and telescoping across the lineup. Let's go ahead and take a look at interior storage because this is a fairly small sedan. First of all, the armrest does continue to adjust just like the previous generation. And then lifting up the center console here, we have a decent amount of storage. It's not going to be a ton, but we do have a rubber lining down there at the bottom. And I'll get out our coupons. I think I know what's going to happen here, but we got to put them in there and test it out anyways. As you can see, they're not exactly going to fit in there very well. I don't really expect that to be the case uh, for a vehicle in this class anyways, but you're going to have to stick those in the glove box if you want to hide them. Now in front of that, we've got our two cup holders. We have another storage area up here in the front. If you chose the Premium Plus or Prestige, this would also double as a wireless phone charging pad. And then you have two USB Type-C connections right there as well. And a little bit of storage over here on this side of the steering wheel. Now you notice this center area here looks uh, very different from the outgoing generation. That's because we've gone to a new style of shifter. It's actually new to the Audi brand completely. Uh, it's a little toggle. So operation of this is just gonna be pull back for drive and then you can push forward or reverse. When we go into reverse, you're gonna be greeted with a standard backup camera. As you can see, we do have active trajectory as well as guidelines and we have front and rear parking sensors. One of the things I didn't expect to see at this price point, however, is the automatic parking uh, feature. So if you press this button right here, 
uh, you can turn on the park assist and automatically pull into and out of parallel and perpendicular parking spots. And then for park, you're just gonna press the P right next to it. And then back behind the shifter, you do have your electronic parking brake as well as a 12 volt outlet. And up next to the shifter, you may have noticed this little thing here. This is also a new to Audi feature. Um, basically, this is all of your audio controls. So you'll notice you have your skip, you have your power, you have your mute. And then to turn up the audio, you actually spin around the outside edge. So you just kind of trace around it like this. And that's how you turn it up and down. And we'll go ahead and sample the audio system right now. So overall sound quality is pretty decent. Uh, this of course is the base sound system since we have the premium trim level. Uh, you can get a Bang & Olufsen 3D sound system and I would recommend doing that if you're really into music. Up above that we have a little row of buttons here uh, related to some things with parking as well as your drive modes and auto start stop system and then above that we have our climate controls. So this is a dual zone automatic climate control setup. You just adjust the temperature up and down with these toggles. You have your fan speeds and your zones all located right there. And then off to the side of that, you'll notice we have the standard three stage heated seats. Um, like I said, included on all the models. Ventilated seats though are not available. And then let's come up here to our display. So one of the things you'll notice about this display before I start talking about the actual features is just the fact that it's angled a lot towards the driver. Really this whole interior is angled towards the driver, which is a really cool touch in addition to these vents that are located up here next to the gauge cluster. Now, as far as the display itself, it is gonna be a 10.1 inch touchscreen that's running the latest MMI touch response system. As you can see, you've got your apps laid out like a tablet um, and you're gonna have standard wireless Android Auto and standard wireless Apple CarPlay are nice features to see though you won't have navigation at this price point you're going to have to option that onto the premium plus or it's going to be standard on the prestige moving up from the display the premium plus or the convenience package on the premium will include this auto dimming mirror with built-in compass and your home link universal remotes and then as we move up here to the roof slide back this sunshade uh, to reveal what Audi calls a panoramic sunroof. I don't know about that label, but it is probably a little bit bigger than a traditional size uh, sunroof, and it is nicely included as standard on all three trim levels. All right, guys, so I'm in the all-new A3's rear area, and I was very curious to be back here because this is typically an area where the A3 is honestly kind of a letdown because it just doesn't have a lot of space and really nothing in the segment does. Um, but I am happy to say for this all new model, we do have actually plenty of space. So we're looking at 35 inches of legroom, 37 inches of headroom, which is very competitive with the segment. I'd say that puts it on the upper end. And as you can see behind Drew seating position, I have, I would say uh, three and a half inches of legroom and my feet can easily slide up underneath the seat. But more importantly, I do have a lot of headroom. So even if you're a taller person, um, you do have a lot of headroom thanks to the cutouts that they have made right here. Now let's go ahead and talk about your feature set. There's not gonna be a ton of features, but we do still have vents right here in the middle. Then we also have down below that, we have this little wheel that can adjust your uh, temperature. Um, it's not like a full three zone setup, but you can adjust the temperature with that wheel. And then we do also have two USB type C ports. We have seat back pockets in both of the rear seats. And then if we fold down the center armrest, there is a cup holder in, inside of here. It is worth noting heated rear seats are not offered on this all new A3. Now let's also check out the trunk because that's also an area where some of these vehicles do struggle a little bit in terms of space. In order to get back here, you just push the button under the lid. And as you can see, Audi has done a really fantastic job with the dampening. It opens fully. Honestly, I'd rather have that than a power trunk because it just opens so smoothly and quickly. Now, the space back here is going to be rated at 10.9 cubic feet. Um, that is 
small, but it's not really unusually so for the segment. I mean, it's 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 pretty okay. As you can see, we have all of our camera equipment back here, and it does fit back here, no problem. So I don't imagine you're going to have too many problems in terms of space. It could be a little bit bigger, but not 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 bad. And then as far as the seats, they do fold 40-20-40 split, so that is a nice touch. You can maximize your cargo space and utility. We have a 12 volt outlet here on the left side. We have a little storage cubby. And then if we lift up the floor, you will find a spare tire. And I do also want to point out that your cargo hinges are covered. Now your passenger seat is actually going to retain the same adjustment as the driver, which is something you really don't expect to see in this segment of vehicle, but it is on the A3 and even on the space model. So we have all the same adjustments. We even have four-way power lumbar support, which is super nice to see. And then if we pop open the glove box, another nice area, we have a really premium felt lining inside of here, and it's also gonna be really large. I wouldn't expect it to be this big for an A3, but it is certainly big enough to fit our coupons in there, no problem. They can scoot all the way in the back. You could really fit a lot more than what we even have in there. And then up top, we have a sun visor. We have LED lighting as well as a mirror. And we can also detach the visor as well as extend it. with this all new Audi A3. So as you can see, just like with the previous generation, this really has a spiffy feel behind the wheel. Yeah. You know, it's always had plenty of power for this size of vehicle to really get it off the line quite quickly. fast yeah. it really is oh, like it's uh good. it's quick like um it's it's enough to get a smile on your face and and this is this guy's is just a regular a3 that's that's really a great thing about it of course they do offer the s3 and then also the rs3 if you need more power um but this thing really does move very quickly yeah so let's let's go ahead and talk about the engine specs of what's powering this so just like with the q3 you actually have a two-prong solution um, as far as the engines go. Both of them are two liter turbocharged four cylinders, but they have a uh, pretty big difference as far as your power output goes. So the front wheel drive model, which is what's gonna come standard on all three trim levels, that's gonna come with 184 horsepower. However, when you get the Quattro all wheel drive system, which is what we have today, that also gets you the more powerful tune of the motor. It's still a two liter turbo four cylinder, but it's 228 horsepower, 258 pound feet of torque. And obviously that's gonna be quite a bit of a boost as far as your acceleration. We're gonna have zero to 60 in just 5.4 seconds. Yeah, that's really, really quite quick. Now, one other thing that's important to note about both of these setups is that they're both mild hybrid. So, just like we've seen with some of the other Audi products, uh, you have basically a small electric component being added to the traditional gas-powered powertrain. And what that's gonna do is just give you some additional advantages like auto start-stop. Um, so this does have the auto start stop that will go ahead and turn the engine off as you come to a stop. So while you're still coasting, it'll turn the engine off. And of course that does also give you better ability to restart as well when the engine refires. You'll see that in progress yeah. as we come to a stop, probably up here at this uh, upcoming red light. You'll just pay attention to the tachometer and you'll see that the engine will turn off before we ever come to a stop. Yeah, and also, like Drew said, it's it's very smooth on the restart. So really, if you had the audio system, you would, wouldn't even notice um, that it's doing that in the background. And of course, that does give you a lot better fuel economy. So I want to talk about this because this is something I was very pleasantly surprised to see. Um, so with this model as equipped, we're coming in at 31 miles a gallon combined. Um, that's 36 mpg on the highway, 28 in the city. And then if you go for the front wheel drive model, that's going to get even better at 32 miles a gallon combined. So this thing really gets good fuel economy. And I'd say a lot of that has to do with that mild hybrid uh, addition.
let's also talk about the transmission as well. So this has a seven speed dual clutch automatic transmission. Uh, I don't know if you can tell in the video, but it really snaps off the shifts quite quickly and crisply as we expect for, from a dual clutch uh, transmission. And I can see Mason getting ready to do a sound yep. level, so let's go ahead and do that. Fifty-nine point three decibels, going fifty-five. Um, that's a little bit louder than something like an A4, and you know I can hear that from the seat of my pants. You know, and since we haven't talked about ride quality, I do want to go ahead and mention that as well. Um, this A3 is definitely going to have a sportier vibe than something like the A4. The A4 is going to be more comfort oriented. This A3 does feel very compact and maneuverable even here from the passenger seat and you're going to feel that in your ride quality it's not saying it has bad ride quality it's just saying it has a little bit of a tighter feel more sporty um, dynamic so it's not going to have like the smoothest ride available in an audi product but honestly that's a good thing for most people buying this so if you're actually looking right now um we're just coasting down this hill. I have my foot off the gas because I don't need to be accelerating. The engine hasn't been running that entire time. So that's pretty cool. Um, this is definitely, I think, a little bit more aggressive here in the A3 than we've seen in some of the other Audis, uh, which are, a little, you know, they only deactivate the engine usually when you're very close to a stop. Like five miles an hour yeah, or less. Yeah, so this one here actually will go ahead and deactivate it when you're even at pretty high speeds, but you're just coasting. And I didn't mention it, but the fuel economy is improved from 25 miles a gallon combined on the previous generation. So you do the math on that, that's six or seven MPG better. Yeah, that, that's a big improvement, especially for a small sedan like this. And it does use regular fuel. So here we are at 53, the engine's off once again. Mason kind of touched on this a little bit earlier, but like he was saying, you know, you do have a very nice athletic feel to this. This is a, you know, a small tossable sedan, just like you would expect. Um, and it is pretty fun behind the wheel, of course. You know, get the S3 if you want to have the most fun behind the wheel, but you know, this, when you put it in a dynamic mode, does tighten up the steering nicely. And just like with the previous generation, you just keep that that tossable, spunky feel that is definitely more athletic feeling than the A4. All right, let's go ahead and get into our slam dunk and air ball. I'll kick us off with the slam dunk. Um, you know, really, I don't think I can pinpoint just one specific thing that they did well, but I think they just did a really great job with the overall redesign of this. Um, it, it needed some tech updates. They updated the tech. The design really looks great and also at a very good price point, which we will talk about in just a second. But they really killed it with this redesign and I also love the powertrain setup. Right, and I think when Mason talks about the pricing, you're gonna see there is actually quite a bit of value baked into this as well. Now on the uh, airball side of things, there's one a uh, little bit of a misstep with the uh, interior. And for me, that's gonna be this shifter. The operation is, it's fine, uh, but it's so small and hard to just grab without really looking at it. I don't know why they had to make it just so tiny. It's only like an inch tall and an <laughs> inch wide. So it's really something you gotta look at. And I just feel strongly, if you're gonna go with an electronic thing, at least make the, you know, the target big enough that you can grab it easily. Cause I just think it's a safety issue when you have to always yeah. look at your shifter versus just grabbing it by instinct. It is cool that it looks like a Porsche shifter, but. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and talk about the price. So the premium model is gonna start at $33,900, um, which is $1,000 less than Audi Q3 if you're keeping tabs on that. The premium plus is gonna be 37.2, Prestige is 41.2. I think it's important to note, a lot of you guys will be happy to know, the more powerful engine and the Quattro all-wheel drive together only cost $2,000 more. So it's not a big price increase to get that 
more powerful motor. Yeah, and this one as equipped does have that more powerful motor as well as a few touches like the wheels on the outside plus the 1045 destination brings it to 40,240, all things included. But overall, Mason and I have, were both very impressed uh, getting behind the wheel of this brand new A3. You know, some of the things in this segment, to be honest, can be a little bit disappointing because oftentimes you've got that badge on the front, but you're missing a lot of equipment. You're missing a lot of the luxury that the other versions uh, in the higher, higher in the lineup will offer you. So you really feel like you're making a sacrifice. I have to say though, with this new generation, you really don't feel that with this A3. I think they've done a great job of packing actually a lot of the important equipment and luxury technology and design into this affordable price tag. And like we said, today we're actually sampling one that really is pretty close to that base price tag, which makes it all the more and more impressive. Well guys, that's all for our in-depth review of the all new 2022 Audi A3 Premium. If you enjoyed watching this video, found it helpful, or just enjoyed, please hit that subscribe button down below. It really helps us out. It gives us more opportunities to give you guys better content. So it really just is a mutual benefit thing here. So go ahead and do that. Also follow us on our other social medias like TikTok and Instagram. And we'll catch you next time as we sample more of the latest automotive delicacies.